Good morning. We're trying to march into spring with daffodils, as you all are aware. Uh, Skagit Valley and La Conner are renowned for their daffodils. That's why we're doing those. Um, I sent you uh, little how-to sketches of how to draw a daffodil and it has its trumpet and then the circle around and of course the stem. Um, when you think of any of these uh, flowers, any flower actually, it's like a human being. They all kind of have gestures that turn their heads to the sun or turn them down or turn them away. So one of the big exercises with our florals is really to try to infuse gesture into your uh, your paintings. And so I think I showed you this. This was one of my five minute sketches a couple of weeks ago. Uh, just to get the motor movement and you know when you have a, when you have a notebook <laughs> of your work it can be your private thing you don't have to show it to anybody of course these don't look like really wonderful daffodils but they are interesting because they have some movement in many of them i just kept my my pencil moving And it makes for interesting marks and interesting gesture. And not stiff. And so before I started thinking about how to present this class yesterday, I was working on it. Um, I wanted to really have it sink in about gesture and about movement and these are not pretty but uh, I like this one especially but they're jaunty and they have some interesting uh, feel about them I used inks and as most of you know with these acrylic inks uh, I often draw with the stopper and that really kind of uh, creates some interesting lines and it frees you up from being exacting and going like, well, I can't do it with this, but like with a pencil that you tighten up. As I said a couple of year, uh, weeks ago, um, when you have a tight drawing, your painting will be tight. So I encourage you to do some quick gestural drawings. And if you don't have a larger sketchbook notebook uh, thing for taking notes or making little drawings, I encourage you to get one so that you can have your own private little uh, exercise book. Here's some more I did, and they, they weren't very successful, but look at the gestures of these. I think that that's really important. So I will be doing a, a, a demo. Actually, let me just quickly, uh, quickly do a little sketch with this reference. So you remember our ellipses for cups. Look at that. That's an ellipse, right? You can make it more round if you choose to. But feel that muscle memory. Look at how that's already turning its head this way. And even the little trumpet ends up having an ellipse that marries up with the, the ellipse of where the petals will be. And just keep the pencil moving. It's... It, it, People say to me, I hate drawing, but think, just try it, and you'll see how really kind of, what Zen moments you can, you can create for yourself. And 
And all of these are turned different ways and I can create the petals around that ellipse and then create a stem. It's that easy. It's not simple, but it's easy enough. It's not easy, but it's simple. That's what I should say. So you can get them as fine-tuned as you want, but I choose not to get them so fine-tuned. Um, I will show you a couple of things I'm working on that imply daffodil, but don't say it out loud. This is what I'm working on. And you can see that the daffodils are just implied. And that's enough for me. I'm call This is almost done. It's about 85% done. But I'm not going to articulate the daffodils. But the color, the shading, it all implies daffodil. You would look at it and think, oh, daffodils. But you don't see everything. There's some mystery about it. This is another one that you might have seen during the Zoom class that's more done. But again, it was my uh, intention to just create a mass and have it feel like daffodils or whatever yellow flower you thought might it might be. But that's where my head is going, is to become more abstract and to just kind of leave some mystery to the things I'm painting. Um, I don't, I don't suggest that all of you have to do that. Sometimes you have to uh, actually draw the thing before you can kind of create an abstract illusion of it. But as some people say, uh, under every representational painting is an abstract painting. And so uh, think about that. And again, remember every Painting is an underpainting until you call it done. I've sketched this on an 8x8 panel with charcoal, and I fixed it, quote-unquote, with Spetrafix, a non-toxic, non-aerosol fixative for working with pastels and chalk and charcoal, etc. I combined some most of this and some of this into my little sketch here and who knows what direction it'll take but that's enough um my palette is still the same old same old it's the same exact palette i just keep adding to it um this time though i'm adding uh, a little more of the yellows i have naples yellow if some of you have that if not it's just really a kind of a uh, opaque yellow. When I very first started painting as an adult, quote unquote, um, my instructor had us always start paintings with Naples yellow because Naples yellow is opaque, but it has a property that the light bounces off your canvas or your page uh, when it's there. So I have added Naples yellow. I have CAD yellow medium and my always my standby yellow ochre. And Quinn gold because that's kind of the run of my Oh, well, I'll have to get another one, but Quinn Gold, I think we we'll call that one dead. Uh, but Quinn Gold, all of those colors I've just mentioned are uh, on the spectrum as yellows. And so some people would kind of refer to that as off palette a little bit. If I'm using primaries, they're just different yellows. It creates a dominant color of yellows, but using the spectrum of yellows. I actually threw in some orange, as you can see, for my uh, my other things I was working on. And then the same spectrum of colors, um, alizarin, magenta, uh, ultramarine, phthalo, black for mixing. And these are my lighter 
blues that I've shown you before. I could mix them, but it's easier to uh, squeeze them out. These are also uh, Liquitex Basics. Bright aqua green and light blue permanent. Uh, and then I mix my greens a lot with all uh, with them um, yellow ochre and black and the blues so that something stays dominant it doesn't get muddy but that's it you see what you see here is what you get uh, and it seems to keep working so I'll start painting and see you on the flip side
as you can see, I lost my way a little bit, uh, making a few changes as I went. But I had to go back in with some soft pastel and reestablish where I was. So uh, I also changed the background because uh, I still haven't made up my mind what I want back there. Um, of course, purple and yellow are compliments, but I'm not sure that that's where I want to be. So um, background is still to be determined. Of course, the values look better uh, this way, but this is still a work in progress. Okay. I'm going to negatively paint around my blossoms just so I can reestablish the gesture of my blossoms as I talked about earlier. I want them to uh, have some personality. So that's one of the reasons I stopped. This is only an eight inch square and it's a little challenging uh, when it gets so wet. So, we'll see what comes next. I just wanted to share with you, um, A, that uh, negative painting has helped me image these uh, daffodils a lot better than I was doing. And B, um, I have a, a humidity thermometer in my studio, and it's at 34 percent humidity which is very dry um, so I have just placed an order for some open acrylics I'll keep you posted but this stuff is drying out so fast that's kind of hampering the way I do things I use some water and I keep spritzing my my paints I could use some uh, matte medium I guess to slow it down, but um, I, I don't like the consistency of it when I do that. Anyway, I know, because I have some open acrylics, that when I mix them with my regular acrylics, um, they work. They stay moist for a little bit longer, but they're not so moist that they get tacky or sticky. So, I'll let you know. They're supposed to be delivered this week. You've noticed that I've gone over several of the yellow petals several times, always adding some more white. And we know that that is something we have to do to keep the yellows vibrant, is to add titanium white. So that's why I'm doing that. And now that I have put chalk lines and the darker background, I feel I'm able to complete this in a more timely manner. It's coming along.
So, uh, you see me in this film going over and over the petals. There's bunches of different colors in a close-up. I don't think they'll show in the film. But um, as we've discussed in other classes, um, when you're using yellow, you need a lot of white. And I didn't want the daffodils to be overcome with white. So I had layers and layers of white and yellow and quin gold and a little bit of yellow ochre. Um, and it kind of turned out okay. It's not my finest. Um, I still have deliberately, I still have some of the chalk showing. And it's just kind of a loosey-goosey rendering of some of these daffodils. And you can probably now understand why in my more abstract ones, I don't develop the daffodils per se. Anyway, it's a fun exercise and it'll get us launched into our uh, month of florals. Daffodils, frankly, are a little harder because the trumpets have to be foreshortened depending on the gesture. Uh, and uh, we want them to stay a little wonky. Anyway, this is it. I'll see you on Zoom.